what's up y'all welcome back to the channel michael here shots to the yacker and we are back out on lake michigan for the spring coho bite and right off on the water we literally launched we're not even a quarter mile offshore from the launch southern basin of lake michigan indiana waters where uh we get hooked up with uh, our first fish here um listen what i want to do throughout this video is kind of just share with you some some of the technique here i'm running so that hopefully helps you to catch some fish not just me actually catching fish um and of course if you have any questions throughout any of it please leave it in the comments below where i do read through them and trying to get back to as much as possible and uh let me just go ahead and answer this question now where do you launch from listen it's not that hard to find launches uh in chicago they're all shut down but uh, throughout indiana and wisconsin there's still a lot of public launches that are open so just pull up a google maps pick one head on over there and go ahead and get on the bike now uh at this point i'm gonna start uh, rolling out my lead core right here and the lead core rod with a spin doctor orange uh dodger and a orange crush fly and uh, just to kind of give you a little setup, you can see Chicago in the sky, uh, Chicago skyline in the background. Uh, just kind of give you a little bit of a uh, idea of what I'm running here. I got the flat lines out on the cranks. Uh, my buddy Bubba found out real quick, um, as soon as we got out in the water pretty much, that the uh, crank bite was on really, really good. Uh, but as you see here, uh, my lead core got popped up pretty hard, and I'm pretty oblivious to the fact that it's going off until I realize. And even then, now at this point, I realize I got a fish on the lead core. Um, but on the lead core setup here, uh, I'm running a 30 size uh, Magda Pro reel, and uh, I let out about 65 to 70 feet of uh, line. And uh, that was definitely about one and a half uh, colors of uh, lead if you if you track it that way. Um, I'm not really good about that. I still just let it out by the counter. Um, that's just how you know i do it and uh so about the, that amount of line is what really caught my two bigger fish off of the dodger fly setup on the lead core um, you figure with that amount of line out uh the setup was probably getting somewhere in the my estimation seven foot range i think with that much line out um maybe I mean, this is still relatively high in the water. We're sitting in about 25 to 30 feet of water fishing. <clears throat> and, of course, trying to manage the setup here by bringing in the flatline rod uh, so it doesn't get tangled into the uh, lead core. I think on this trip it actually ended up happening, which was a, always a cluster uh, to deal with. But uh, as we see here, <clears throat> bringing in the fish, uh, they were out there in mass. A lot of schools again, which is always a good sign. And uh, a lot of above average size fish were definitely being caught. And by the way, hopefully this is the last video that I kind of have to go back to old school style and voice over the um, over the video. I, I've, I've purchased some equipment that hopefully I can just record better audio on the water directly with the video, um, so I can do more on the water, you know, commentary, which is what I would actually prefer. But it's really challenging to do it all and as you see here i definitely got my other line tangled in uh, with this fish and uh i just spared you guys quite a few minutes of me untangling it all before i pull up this bad boy as uh, a really nice uh, fat female I, I think sometimes me having the camera so far in the front of the kayak doesn't really capture the, the size of it but that was definitely really above average and thick thick uh fish now one thing that has been working really well is, uh, and here we go again, just right as I'm setting out lines, uh, the Dodger fly pulls in another one. This is going to be another nice size female. Uh, but what I was saying is, as far as your cranks here, bright colors really, really, really are what's uh, working for us, right? We're talking about oranges and greens, uh, bright painted, and especially the jointed flicker sheds, which I think are relatively new i think they might have been out for a year or so now uh we're talking about medium size or medium depth divers that are really really producing setting those back at about uh 40 to 50 feet um is kind of where on this particular day was really the the the, the right amount of line and the right right amount of depth for these fish to target in on but it, the, the lures have to be bright they would have to be bright, right? Like you kind of see my one lure swinging in from the right side there. It's 
it's a, a chartreuse with an orange kind of tip on the, on the tail. Um, the lure that this fish is hooked up on is a jointed, uh, kind of like an orange fire tiger-y kind of a color. Anything with orange and chartreuse or some green uh, definitely was getting smacked. And uh, on this day, happy to share with you, this is this doesn't happen a lot, and especially for kayak fishing, it's it's really quite the accomplishment when you limit out, right? You know, when you think about it here, we're on big, big open water, and boats have the opportunity to cover so much more water than we do out of a kayak. Um, they have so much more opportunities to catch fish because of the way they can spread out their rigs, right? Leg core, uh, planer boards, down riggers. Uh, and if they have multiple people on the boat, then of course they have more rods in the water doing this. So just it just maximizes opportunities to catch fish. So being in a kayak and being able to being able to limit out is again really really uh, quite an accomplishment in my opinion. And the fact that uh, me, my buddy Bubba, Will, and, and uh, Dave all limited out together this day was just incredible and uh it was, it was such a good feeling here back then another big female um these bigger females had multiple owl wives inside of them when, when i went to go uh clean them out uh later that day here we are finally getting bit on our flatline cranks again these lures are they can't possibly go be going more than 10 feet uh or, or, you know just because they're not a doesn't have a big lip on them they're just a, a medium depth kind of lip on them so uh, i think if you were casting this normally it might get down to five feet uh the fact that we're letting it out about 40 to 50 feet maybe gets down closer to seven eight nine range somewhere somewhere in that range is my best kind of guesstimate but all of these fish are sitting pretty high tons of, of bait and schools of fish and, um clutter along the bottom and in the mid water column uh, but these coho that were biting were definitely up higher. And in and, and, and my belief, they're the fish that are, you know, the ones that are going to be feeding. So um, they tend to just be higher in the spring anyway. Uh, fighting this thing over here. Uh, water temps currently on this day and still on Lake Michigan are looking at, uh, I believe it was around 48-ish uh, on this day. It's been kind of going up one day by a degree or two and then goes back down just because we've had inconsistent weather here um hopefully these next couple of days i'm able to get out hopefully uh we'll see because we've had some snow roll in and we got some high winds coming soon so just trying to figure out when you can squeeze uh the time to get out there if you have the opportune window to do it when there's low wind is uh we'll see how that goes this fish putting up quite the battle here one thing I do want to point out is if you are trolling with uh, any kind of line counter setups and whatnot, make sure, and it's super key, that you adjust your drag. And I can't stress this enough. You got to adjust your drag so that once you put it in the holder, and this is something that I do that helps me to kind of get the right kind of uh, uh, drag set and tension set on it, is uh, once I get the lure set up, I put it in the rod holder, I'll kind of just give it a tug with my hand uh, on the line. And if um, if I'm not able to kind of get a little bit of line to peel off when I give it a little quick jerk or a little tug, um, then I'll back it off a little bit. A lot of times, um, even some of my friends, when we go out fishing, I have to tell them, you got your drag on way too tight so that when the fish hits, of course the rod's going to give it some play, but uh, it's nothing wrong with letting the fish pull a little line out there just so that you don't end up ripping the lure out of the fish's mouth you want to be careful with them because they are troubles and whatnot and here we pull out another nice size coho salmon beautiful some of the tastiest listen i've i've been eating very good uh during this quarantine process here i'm going to get this one in the back continue on and at this point um i'm working on my fourth fish and here we got another one I did end up missing about three to four uh, fish from short strikes, or uh, I think there was one, I believe, I had hooked up, but then, uh, well, no, there were two, actually, that I hooked up, one at the beginning of this video, and uh, there was one other time off video that uh, hooked up. I felt it, fought it for a little bit, and then it spit the hook on me, and then a couple of drive-bys, which, if you're not familiar with what that is, that's when the fish just kind of comes by and takes a swipe at the lure and kind of knocks it off its, its, off its tracking path, and you see your rod kind of pop. Uh, but then there's no fish on it. That's that's what we call a drive-by. Um, and uh, working on getting the fourth fish in 
for the day here. Again, the hot lures uh, were definitely the crankbaits, the jointed crankbaits in the kind of bright color patterns here. And not that far deep either. You know, you could literally probably also just catch these fish by casting. Um, but it's just more efficient to just troll uh, throughout it uh, than it is to cast. Unless you were literally in a super highly concentrated area where they were just stacked up. At, and then you could potentially do that and still catch your limit. But for time's sake, it's just e easier to kind of just troll around. Keep the waters in the lure. Uh, I'm sorry, the lures in the water. And then go ahead and uh, bag your fish. There, there was a pretty bad netting. I was going to go net the fish. And uh, it, it, it got out of the net and then hooked into the net. And so I had to drag it in from the outside. Luckily, I brought it in. And that is it for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Any questions, again, leave it in the comments below. All of my social media to stay connected with me is in the description below as well. So feel free to follow and reach out there. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video where hopefully I have this audio situation all set up and so we can do more on the water commentary all right I'll talk to you guys later peace